Welcome. In this episode, we're heading out to Port Gibbon to check out the beach, take the truck for a run on the sand, and I go and visit Air Shellfish, which is an oyster hatchery. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, at 9 o'clock it was 28 degrees and it's 10 o'clock now and it's 36 degrees here in Cal. So we're going to head to the beach because what else can we do? It is so hot out there, it's just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, we're hoping that when we get down on the side of the cliff that it won't be as windy. Um, locals have told us that that's the case so hopefully um, because it is a full northerly and it's just, just windy. But we'll cool off and we'll be happy chuckies. Even a cave. So cool. How beautiful is it? It's just magic. And then you've got the ocean over here. Looks so good. Ah, oh, like sand fly things. Okay. Oh, hit the water. I think he's a little bit excited because he hasn't even seen that one.
Is that nice, puppy? Oh! Oh, buddy! You put it in fourth, didn't you? I'm lucky enough to be here at Air Shellfish, which is a oyster hatchery in Cal. And they're going to show me through the nursery and everything else that they do to help the production of oysters. You'll have to put some yeah, boots on. You'll have to clean your hands. Yeah. Oysters pose no risk to us. Yes. But we can easily kill millions inadvertently with the bacteria we carry. Oh, right. Okay. So the whole place is a biosecure environment. Yes. Yes. Now, just to get an overview, um, that, that corner is where our brood stock is and half of it is cool yeah and that's where we take we go through a whole process of selecting what brood stock we believe will give the characteristics best suited for um, the oyster farmer right and so we'll take and once we get those characteristics we put them in there and we cool it down and they effectively go to sleep oh, okay. hibernate once we take them out of that back area and within two weeks we know we're going to do a spawn we spawn every six weeks okay and do a few tricks and so we get them spawning all on a nominated day yep and we'll end up from there we'll end up with a half a billion or a billion eggs wow and we'll enough sperm that we can fertilize them all yep and out of that process we will take into these tanks here you see these big static tanks we call them yep we'll take half a million um, and or we'll do it 400 million say 100 million each tank 
Yep. And that's where the larvae are. And they only stay in those tanks for a day. And, and we just pick out the best, say 200 million, 250 million. Yep. And we move them to those, see those cones, upside down cones? Yes. And we move them there, and then we leave the larvae there for 10 days while they mature. Okay. And they're just getting, and at that stage, and then we trick them into thinking they found a rock. Ah. And so we've got a, a little technology thing we do, and at that point, We'll take probably 40 million. Um, we're just doing a spawn now. We're finishing the spawn. Okay. And we took 41 million. So we went from a billion, 400 million, 250 million, about 100 million, 41 million, Oof. and we'll end up with about, in this case, we'll end up with about 33 million. Wow. And that will be, we've tricked them, and as soon as we trick them, yep. um, they took them from larvae, as you'd imagine, larvae, and they and then they become little oysters. Oh, wow. And so when they're larvae, they have all their lungs and their feeders on the outside. Yeah. And then they bring it all internalised, and for all intents and purposes, there's fat. Wow. And that's your baby oyster. Yeah. And they, we have them in this room to 500 microns, half a millimetre. So Conchita is the queen of spawn. Yes. Um, I need a T-shirt. Yeah, right, I'll put Spawny across there. Spawn <laughs> Queen. Spawn Queen. queen. Yeah. Um, but those those little fellas there, yes. um, they grow like the baby wood. Yep. So they can increase about that much per bottle of the night. Wow. So it's just like a, a fetus, baby. It's, yep. It goes for it. Yeah. And um, so that's just salt water, is it, running yeah. through? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we pull salt water in and then yep. um, we don't do much to it at all other than uh, add more algae that is out in the harbour anyway yep. and then send it on back again. Oh. Yeah. Well, for example, there's about 3 million spats wow. per bottle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so That's a lot of oysters. It is, but they won't, they won't make it all. No, okay. If, um, but it's, so yeah, that's to say Conchita's this week is Every six weeks, she works her magic. Yep. Um, if the people got 20 million in a spawn, they'd think they're very clever, and Conchita normally gets about 40. So, yeah. um, wow. she's <laughs> it's top of the lane you what she's doing. You must them. Um, we're doing records again and again, so Fantastic. it's very good. What they do at this point is we grow, we grow them in bottles, and they start on this side, and we get them through to two millimeters. Okay. And um, that normally takes about, six to nine weeks um, and uh, and that's and what this room is all about is cleanliness yep. and we can keep them consistently graded so they're always the same size yeah um, otherwise you'll get yeah those will dominate and the runs of the litter will pass away that's, so um, yeah so that's this room, so this this will get it up now. So they'll move the, through the bottle system and get it up to two millimeters. Yep. You start at say 30 million in here. Uh, if we got out, um, if we can get out 10 million to yep. move, leave this room, we'd say we're pretty happy. Okay. Um, so that's we'd say there's incredible amounts of. Uh, the mortality in culling. This is our main food generation area, lay flat. These are all algae. Wow. And um, it's all about, we bring water in, we filter it. Does the plastic disintegrate from the, the sun? Pardon? Does the plastic disintegrate from the sun? Not really. No? It's, 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 this is what it's designed for. Yeah. Um, but each one of these zags Different colours of the full ones have different algae. Okay. And these ones are filling up. And these ones, oh, yeah. And they're like any plant, it's like your local broccoli. Yep, yep. We <laughs> put it in, um, just feed them carbon dioxide and sun yep. and clean water. Yeah. And the algae grow. And once they, once they bloom, and, um, and then like your broccoli plant, after a month, the quality of the cells of the algae denatures. Yep. See if, it's, if you dump the bag, throw it away and start again. Wow.
Well, you can imagine how many trillion cells are in here because yeah, Henry's yeah. the master chef. Hi, in this how area. are you? Good. <laughs> Henry likes the master to, chef. Oh, yeah. The master. <laughs> he puts out about three and a half million cells per milliliter. Right. And without that, all of this falls apart. Like every part is obviously integral on other. Yeah. Henry doesn't cook well. Yep. Then nothing grows. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No, no pressure. <laughs> right, this area here, yep. only got one operating at the moment. But what this does is we bring the oysters over at two kilometres. Yep. And we put them into here. And um, once they're in here, they see that if you had to use as a simile, that in Hatchery you've just come from, yep. that's a six star hotel. Okay. That is the best, if you're, the best, if you're an oyster, yep. that's the best you're going to get anywhere in the world. Yeah, top quality food, food accommodation, food, accommodation yep. everything, temperature, pH, ammonia, everything's done just perfect for them. Yep. So that's, yep. that's perfect world. Yes. It's dangerous to take them from a perfect world and put them in a three-star motel. Yes, fair the enough. They, yeah. they feel a bit snotty and some of them yeah. say it. <laughs> so what they do is this here, this in the raceway system, we're bringing fresh water up. Yep. But what we're doing, so they're getting a taste of the real world. But then what we're doing is that we're inoculating it. And you see how green it is. Yep. We've got inoculation dams just over here and we're supercharging the water. Real salinity, real temperature, yep. but a really, they don't have to want for food. They yep. can be gluttonous. Okay. And that's what happens. So yep. we've got, and we leave them here from two millimeters until five millimeters or yep. three millimeters, sorry, three millimeters. Yep. And then, come over here. Ah. The tide's gone out. It's very intensive. They're far, every day, the guys, they won't be out there today because the, the tide and the wind is going to get really ugly out there soon. Yeah, um, yeah. But they're out there every day, moving them, lifting them, putting them down. And your question, how do you get that shape? Yep. An oyster, if you leave it alone, yep. will just grow a big shell and protect itself, and the meat will be... So what we, so what we do is, you, you put, we all put, like every farmer, I guess, you put it down low. Yep and it'll grow flat yep. out okay and then we lift it up and like it's on a rock in the tidal zone and it starts getting washed, washed back and forth in the baskets yep and that knocks all the frilly bits off the new shell okay and only very hard shell keeps growing yeah and that makes some shape ah. into the nice shape you get lovely okay you, still, you look at the ones on the rocks yeah they yeah they gnarly ugly. yeah gnarly gnarly, gnarly yep. yeah and so that's the process of farming, and it depends the size of a lot of things, but yeah. we have to grade them regularly out there yeah. to get to separate the sizes. Yeah, okay. Once again, yep. they'll yep. dominate, the big ones will dominate the yeah, little ones. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. so, um, yeah. and so that's us. With all this talk of oysters, I'm now going to have to shuck some, because I'm hungry. Thanks for watching oh, and don't man. forget to subscribe uh, so pretty. hit the bell if you so want a reminder pretty. of when our next episode is and we always like a thumbs up. In our upcoming episodes, one, I'll introduce you to the silo man, we'll check out the black stump, take the truck into the sand dunes with Carl driving and there'll be some tips and tricks coming through too about self-sufficiency in your van.